biggest things that I get questioned and asked a lot about this time of the year in the colder months is catching bait. Catching bait's one of those things that I have a lot of people say, man, you know, I'd love to go out fishing, but every time that I go out this time of the year, I always struggle with bait. It's always a pain in the tail. Winter time is one of those times of the year that can be very difficult. Everything's against you, the elements, it's miserable outside, especially when the wind's blowing, but it offers a really good opportunity to come out here and catch some really great fish. Today I'm gonna cut my depth finder on. I'm gonna show you all my settings and I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm looking for on my depth finder when it comes to catching bait this time of the year. All right guys, so we're gonna start out here on our home screen. I'm gonna take you to the screen that I use 95% of the time. It offers everything that I need in one screen. I have my 2D, my down imaging, my side imaging, and my maps. So the first thing I'm gonna go through, and probably one of the most important things especially when you're talking about over 10 foot of water, 15 foot of water, it's your 2D. So I'm gonna click on that. You can see I'm running 200 kilohertz. I got my sensitivity on three, my color line on 67. Now this is gonna change and this is gonna vary a lot depending on your water quality. I have my range set up on auto so it automatically fluctuates. Sometimes if I'm on like a real soft bottom in lake, sometimes I'll manually move it just to see if there's a false bottom under there. But for the most part, I'm running auto. Now, we're moving on to our down imaging. Our down imaging I have running on 800 kilohertz. Typically, I'm not what you call a deep water fisherman. There is a lot of deep water on a lot of the bodies of water that I fish regularly. But very seldom do I ever fish over 60 foot of water. And when I do, I might bump that down to 455 kilohertz. The thing about the Lowrance versus like Hummingbirds or Garmin, is your down imaging and your side imaging are going to run off the same frequency. It's not like the hummingbird where you can run a special frequency on down imaging and a special frequency on side imaging. It doesn't work like that. Now the next and last but not least but also very important tool is the side imaging. Right now, like I said before, my down imaging and my side imaging run off the same frequency, 800 kilohertz and anything under 50 foot of water I usually get a really good reading on. Um, I'm only shooting about 61 feet out to the side right now or catching bait You know shooting even if we're in 30 foot of water shooting 120 feet to the side does me no good Because we're only going to be casting right off the front of the boat now that we've covered the basics with electronics We're going to talk about location. I anticipate if it's still being early in the morning These shad are going to be a little bit deeper this morning this time of the year We've had a really really cold winter here in Virginia the backs of the creeks are just a little bit too cold, so that moves a lot of those fish back out of the creeks, back into those deeper portions of the river, deeper pockets. The sun's high today, water's rising right now. It's not gonna take long for these fish to move up on the flats, start moving up in the shallows, but for right now, these fish are gonna be a little bit deeper, I think. So let's ride out here, see if we can find a school, and we're gonna throw the net and get to fishing. All right guys, so you can see we're coming out of the mouth of the creek right here. I'll try and keep the boat away from the sun so y'all can really see this screen good. We're getting ready to step off into the main channel. But you can see we stepped off this ledge right here. And immediately we're starting to see a lot of those blues, those purples, those reds. This is actually a small one. This is my preferred size. These are absolutely perfect. All right, guys. 
so we are off the water and we are in the office to get a little bit more focused and a little bit in depth on this topic because me going out there cutting my depth finder on kind of explaining what's going on then going out there and throwing the net and it actually working is one thing but that only applies to that particular situation to really grasp the full picture to understand how this is going to work in a day-to-day -day basis no matter what the conditions are, we need to understand how warming trends and colding trends affects these fish, especially in the wintertime. I'm gonna jump right in, right to where we shot the first segment of this video and kinda understand what's going on as conditions vary. This is Gordon's Creek. This is the main river. And this little area right here is exactly where we shot this video. Now, before I can go any further into this, we need to understand how deep water and shallow water changes this time of the year. First thing that we'll start out with is deep water. Deep water is consistent. Nothing changes in the deep water. It's much more regulated. It isn't as much fluctuation. These fish like consistency, and that's why this time of the year, when it's really cold, you find a lot of fish deep. And then we have to talk about the shallow water. Shallow water loses its temperature quicker on cold trends and gains its temperature back quicker on warmer trends versus the main portion of the river. So as an example, when we shot the first segment of this video, let me back this out for a minute. This is the back of this creek back here, some of the backwaters. There was actually ice in some of these areas back here when we launched the boat that morning. We launched the boat, noticed there wasn't a whole lot of bait in the creek, decided to ride out here into this deeper section out here. And as soon as we dropped out into that deep section, you saw these images right here. Those fish were bunched up, they were tight, they were right on top of each other, and that's because it was really cold that morning. If we back up and look at the depth finder, the water temperature was actually like 37 degrees that day. See, these fish aren't what you call smart. A lot of times we give them more credit than they actually need, but they're not dumb and they know how to survive. And in the fall time when these fish are transitioning, getting ready for winter, they're gonna put themselves in positions where they can survive, and they can make it through the winter halfway unscathed. That being said, they're a creature of habit, they're a creature of instinct. So let's fast forward a couple of days while we've had this warming trend right after this video. We've had a lot of sunlight, we've had low wind, it's been really warm for this time of the year. The first thing that happens when that, when that takes place is these backwaters and the backs of these creeks begin to warm up rapidly. Even so much to give you an example, the backs of these creeks right now are just about 50 degrees, depending on where you are, versus the main river being 40, 41 degrees. So what that'll do is as this warm water starts to funnel out of these backwaters and the backs of these creeks, starts to make its way out into the main river, the shad and the fish alike, they feel that warming trend and they begin to migrate back in here to follow that warm water because that's what's comfortable for them. They are cold-blooded creatures, but they do not like cold, cold, cold. They will tolerate it, but they don't like it. Once it's really cold, it becomes very easy to pattern and target these fish because it's like shooting a fish in the barrel. They all go to one area. But when it warms up, the negative side to that is they scatter. And that is what's really important about what I'm trying to get across right now. Because yeah, we caught fish deep that particular day when it was 37 degrees. But guess what? That might not be the way it is this weekend when the water temperatures rose seven, eight degrees. So when you can begin to think and locate these fish to start, you know, you lar locate a large quantity of fish at any given time, this time of the year, and things change, you just have to keep in mind that these fish aren't going far, you know? They are still in that area somewhere. They might have gone back up into the creek. They might have pushed up onto this flat. But one way or another, they're in that area somewhere. You don't have to say, okay, well, there's just no fish here now. They completely left. That's not how it works. That being said, if you found some use in this video, make sure that you hit that big thumbs up. We really appreciate that kind of stuff. And if you like these more in-depth style videos that we're doing right here, Make sure that you leave that down in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you guys, get some feedback. If you have some questions, some topics that you might want us to cover, please add those as well. We're trying to knock them out as we go. Until then, guys, we'll see you guys on the next one. We're gone.